Before we start the chapter on CNNs, let's look at the ImageNet results over the years. In the year 2010 and 11, the the winning models were based on classical computer vision based techniques. In fact, they both used a variation of uh, SIFT along with SVM for classification. In the year 2010, the winning model had an error rate of 28.2%. That is you can say it has a classification accuracy of around 72%. In the next year, the winning model had an error rate of around 25%. That is there was an improvement of around 2 to 3%. During this period the progress in the field of computer vision was somewhat slow and all this changed in the year 2010 when a team from University of Toronto won the competition using a CNN based architecture and this architecture was called AlexNet and we can see that the error rate has dropped by almost 90% compared to the winning model in the previous year and this is what got the industry excited about machine learning and hence this movement is called the AlexNet movement and in the subsequent years most of the winning models were based on cnn architectures we can see how the error rate, error rate kept falling down and now it has reached to less than 5% but all this improvement in the error rate came at a cost if you take the dalal and tricks detector for example it had just one layer that is you take the image extract the hoc features and you are done with the feature extraction and if you take the dpm for example you have two layers but If you compare that with the modern ResNet architecture, it has 152 layers. Since the model runs so deep, there are many layers in this architecture. It's called deep neural networks, and hence the name deep learning. In contrast, the networks or architectures that are based on the classical computer vision are called as shallow networks. If you take the Dalal and Tricks detector for example, how big is the model size? Your trained SVM model is of length 3780. that is you need less than 4 kb of data to store the model but even a resnet 50 architecture for example it needs 25 million parameters and you need almost 100 mb to store it not just that sometimes you need a gpu based machine to execute this code at a faster rate despite all these things it might still take a lot of time to do the execution so now the question is how do you deploy such a model on a edge device When I say edge device, I mean devices like uh, mobiles, CCTV cameras, etc. Currently, there is research and investment going on in this area. That is, how to come up with the lightweight models with uh, less execution cost, so that it can be de- uh, deployed on the edge device. And in parallel, in, uh, people in the industry are also trying up with uh, trying to come up with boards like uh, Movidus, Jetson, TPUs, etc., so that these uh, small boards can run the machine learning models. And lastly. The features that you learn using the classical computer vision techniques like SIFT, HOG, etc., are called hand-engineered features. That's because you know what exactly the kind of features you, that you are trying to extract. But in the case of CNN-based architectures, since you have so many parameters, sometimes it's not very easy to understand what the network has learned. And this is a separate field of uh, study called explainable AI. Let me give you an example. I read a story some time back. but i'm not sure if it is true but it nevertheless makes a point during the 1980s pentagon wanted to come up with a system a computer vision based system to see if it could detect battle tanks hiding behind trees and to do this they wanted to try out a neural network based approach so what they did they took 100 images of uh, tanks that were behind trees and 100 images of tanks that were out in the open and they trained a machine learning model based on these images and this model worked perfectly it worked so well that they started doubting this model so what they did they went back and collected some more data and fed this new data to the, to the model but this time the model's response was pretty much random so when they went back and analyzed they realized that all the all these 100 images that were taken were taken on a sunny day and these 100 images that were taken out in the open was were taken on a cloudy day So in fact this machine learning model had learned to predict whether the sky was cloudy or not it had nothing to do with these tanks few days back i heard a similar example somebody tried to use a machine learning model to classify tumors as malignant or benign on and on the images related to the malignant tumors a scale was attached to know how big the tumor was but this scale or this ruler was not affixed to the images related to the benign tumors 
So when this machine learning uh, system did the prediction, it was only looking for whether the image had this ruler or not. It had nothing to do with whether the tumor was malignant or benign. So sometimes there can be a difference between what you think your model is learning and what your model actually learned. You should be aware of this fact and try to try to see or try to understand what your network is learning. And we don't see this problem with uh, with respect to the classical computer vision techniques because the layers are so small, it's easy to understand. Moreover, we have engineered those layers. That is, we know the mathematics behind it and the kind of features that uh, this al these algorithms are trying to extract. So that's a very high level overview of the difference in these two approaches. That is the CNN based approach and classical CV based approaches. And if you're wondering what kind of approach would uh, suit best to your problem? I don't have a very generic answer to that uh, question. It all depends on a case by case basis. But for some applications that needs relatively faster processing, for example, if you are building a camera app that needs to detect the smile and people in the images at runtime, then perhaps a classical CV based approach would be best suited for that. But if your data is very huge, that is your data set is very huge. And if you don't have any real time needs so that the processing can be done in a server or in a desktop class machine, then in such cases where you need high levels of accuracy and there are many classes and data set is huge, you can go for CNN based approach. But to be frank, it all depends on the problem that you have and we have to see in a case by case basis. And as of now, it looks like the industry is leaning towards CNN based approaches.